Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast, episode 161. Well, this was meant to be for Tuesday, but it's, we uh, had to wait for Stunty because, you know, oh, oh, he's an old man and he had to get on his crutches here. So it's now for Friday, the 21st of April, 2023. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Webb, Game Attack, Piss on D, Steam ID, Webby 360G. And joining me today is... Genesis does what Nintendo Nick folks. It took me three days to wipe my ass. That's why it's Thursday, Friday, sorry. So it's number one stunt master. And Sega Switch. Okay. okay. Yep. So sorry for the delay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our little chit chat I put on the Patreon earlier on in the week. But we got there in the end. Uh, we wanted to stunt you on for this because, to be honest, um, I don't think any of us really. I've played the well. I've certainly played the Mega Drive a lot, but I didn't really touch this Master System much. So, um, yeah, I'm that I'm sure the Master System section is going to be a lot shorter than the Mega Drive section. Anyway, uh, it's nice to have Stunty here because um, he has all the systems. Because he is the retro collector extraordinaire, or retro hoarder, as some people like to say. Yeah, hoarder. Yeah. So, um, so let's get it kicking off right. So, I've got a little bit of history of both systems. Uh, it's actually quite interesting because, um, without divulging my age, well, I'm going to die divulging my age a little bit. I was born in 1984, so um, these yeah. were very early in my childhood. These systems. Um, so I don't really remember much about the Master System, more the Mega Drive, because I had one, and I had one until the PS1 come out, but, um, it's quite interesting to see the, um, the short gap between systems and how many years we had to wait in Europe, um, after Japan got them. So, the Master System, uh, were released in Japan in October of 1985, but didn't release in the UK until June 1987. So a good couple of years wait. And the same with the Mega Drive. It released in Japan in 1988 and in the UK in September of 1990. But what you might realise there is only a three year gap between consoles. Which is not a very, you know, that's tiny. You know, we normally mind about a five-year gap between systems, and uh, three years is nothing at all. Um, which, uh, which, which, which I was very surprised about. And also, something I noticed was there's a big, there is an overlap where the same games were were released on both systems. But we'll get into that in a bit because the Sonic games, even though they released on both systems, they were actually separate games. Um, they were completely different. But um, we'll get into that yeah, very, one, very shortly. One, ones, one, some of them were shit, and the other ones weren't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, originally, the Master System was known as the Sega Mark III in Japan, released... Uh, well, the original system was the Sega Mark III, uh, and then everywhere else it became the Master System. Uh, and it looked really weird in Japan. So they had this white version and then they had the Master System original that we all know and love. You know, the long one with the red looked like a cassette thing in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then we had the Sega Master System 2. Um, Which was horrible. Yeah, well, the thing about the Master System 2 was I I remember it fondly because it had Alex Kidd built into it. Mm-hmm. And I played the shit out of that game. Absolutely rinsed it. Um, but yeah, just talking about Sega, just going back though, um, there was actually, Sega released a system before the Master System in Japan. It was known as the SG-1000. actually came out the same day as the uh, Nintendo Famicom, also known as the NES. Um uh, but the Sega Mark III didn't release with very many games, and I think it flopped a little bit, to be honest. Um, just looking at the Wikipedia at the moment. So, uh, obviously, we're going to talking about the Master System. So, that released, and then two years later, released elsewhere in the world. Um, now, this is something that people might not know or remember uh obviously nintendo were vastly more popular 
in Japan and North America than Sega. However, in Europe and Brazil, Sega was predominantly more popular than the Nintendo consoles, which is why for us people in the UK, I mean, my, I mean, this is myself, just to, just to observe, I, I remember the Sega systems more fondly than the Nintendo ones from those from that era because I think they were more more popular. So I just think that's quite interesting when you talk about those systems with with Americans, you have that 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 massive difference in opinion of the systems. Um so yeah, so the original Master System. Now I didn't know this about the Master System. It obviously it took car cartridges. Um, but the original one took these little card things as well. Yeah, they took a credit. Well, the original ones, the original yeah. Master Systems actually took a. They they also had a, a slot on the right hand side of the of the unit that look, and it looks like a credit card you put in it, and it, yeah. it is it is a, like a cart, you know, a cartridge. Um, mm. There was only a handful of games for it. They're actually some of them are quite rare, actually. I think yeah, called, they are like collector's gold if you yeah, drop the card. Did they even come, did did those cards come out in the UK? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I know someone who had one. It was like a weird robot game he had on a card. They did oh, Super Hang right. On. Um I think that's the one I've got. I think it's Super Hang on. It's some I've got one. Not box. I don't even, that's the one thing I will say is I don't even know what they came in. As in did they come in a proper sort of master system case? I think or? it was in just a standard style case from what right. I remember yeah. with my blurred memory from like thirties plus years back. Yeah, but um yeah, they did a few games from um but uh, yeah, I don't know why that never took off really, but it, the other thing is, is how I don't know how it worked, to be honest. As in how you can get so much information on that and then you've got a cartridge that's quite quite a clumsome thing and when you take the cartridges apart if you ever did on on them not that you can't the master systems are shit to take apart anyway the cartridges and the mega drives um yeah they got quite a big chip assembly on, on the inside of them mm. uh, so 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 yeah because like i don't really remember the original master system because i i never owned a master system but my mates had a uh, master system too so i played that a hell of a lot um so i obviously remember the controllers only had two buttons and i obviously remember a alex kid in was it in miracle world that yeah. was built in oh what a game there's actually a remaster of that on the on ps plus at the minute on the ps5 um mm. looks really good actually uh but um to be honest my personal experience with it wasn't a lot so i don't remember a lot of games on it apart from alex kid and playing Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. But what I remember is, even though Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 released on the Mars system, also they released on the Mega Drive, they were completely different games. Like all the levels were completely different and everything um, between the two systems. Which which yeah, is. Didn't, didn't the Master System version pretty much have no backgrounds? It just looked really shit. I actually watched, um, literally just before we recorded, I watched a comparison video of Sonic Master System versus the Mega Drive. Uh, it's actually quite interesting just seeing the differences. Because um, you've got Sonic, uh, especially like Sonic 2, like the intro is very similar with Sonic and Tails, right? But then the first levels, like the first level is called Underground Zone on the Master System, where obviously on on the Mega Drive, it's Green Hill Zone, right? Or, or Emerald Hill Zone, sorry, uh, which we all remember fondly. And yeah, it's just very, very basic on the Master System. I imagine it's probably missing those sort of 3D bits where you're running down the tunnels as well. Yeah, yeah. But um, it, it's, it's weird because, you know... The like because there was such a short gap between the systems, they kind of ran concurrently for many years, um, with the same or similar games releasing on both consoles, kind of like what we see these days with say PS4 to PS5 or Xbox One to series consoles, etc. Um, but obviously, this was quite a big jump, you know, 8 bit to 16 bit, right? 
Um, yeah, so um, obviously, as I mentioned before, the Master System was very popular in the UK, in Europe, and in Brazil compared to Nintendo. I don't actually have the sales numbers in front of me c c comparing them. I've just 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 been doing a little bit of reading up, and it's just it's that's just quite interesting. Um, per peripheral wise, uh, for the Master System, there would it didn't have a lot. So obviously, you had the controllers. There was a light gun. Uh, for some of the light, for some of the light games, and uh, something called a Sega Scope 3D, um, which was is that like for the Master System, or was that for the Mega Drive? No, for the Master System. Oh. Yeah, because I'm just looking at it on Wikipedia, and there's something I never even knew about. So, uh, it was for Space Harrier 3D. Um, yeah. Uh, it says here, a pair of 3D glasses, skates, Sega Scope 3D were created for games such as Space Hero 3D. Although, Master System users need an additional converter to use them. Um, yeah, so it's just quite interesting. But um, one one thing I do remember from from watching a video um, a, a long while ago about the systems was the mega drive actually ha actually uses the master system chip inside of it for the sound i'm sure i remember it right i'm sure i saw a video on that so so, so that so that so that's quite interesting but anyway i've been talking a lot did did you guys uh, have any experiences with the master system one or two i'll let stunty go first it was really easy. No. <laughs> oh, no. You, you own one, though. Yeah. Years, years and years later, I never had a Master System. At the um, time? Okay. No, at the time, no, I never had one. It was only when I started doing the car booting, um, probably late 90s, well, uh, yeah, late 90s, early 2000s, when I actually got a Master System. Um, they were just 85... When they come out, I was probably still on my Commodore 64, to be honest. And I was sort of also at that time, I was sort of drifting away from games because I was going out, you know, riding my BMX and stuff like that and doing stuff like that. So I missed the Master System. I do remember it out. Um, I don't remember anyone having one, though. I must admit, that's the one thing I will say. Um, but yeah, I picked one up years, years, and years later. And um, I've had, I've still got. I think I've got two, um, as in like the original ones in the box, um, because they come they, they come in a white box. They were quite a nice box, you know. They came in. Um, they they were not really a big finder at the car boots, to be honest. And even the games. I mean, I've got quite a lot of games for them now. Over the years, I've sort of picked them up as you find them. Um, but there was the, the other thing as well to, to bring up about the games as well is the game cases were absolutely shit. <laughs> think about it. I mean, they were really. I mean, they did they did one certain games like the last. I think it was the Ninja, and it, it was like someone it was like the kid of four did the drawing on the front. Oh yeah, I thought you meant the actual cases themselves. I no, the artwork. No, the, no, artwork, the artwork was basically yeah. a grid, basic grid with like. Some child with a crayon clutched That's between right. its toes having a seizure, <laughs> basically. Yeah, and then it was like, then they got a little bit more inventive, as in, like, I mean, there was stuff like Double Dragon that came out for it, and yeah, the, the graphics were, yeah, they just sort of, mm. they they had this drawing, they thought, oh, well, we'll stick it on top of the, even though it's still got all the grid paper still, we'll have that all underneath still, you know. So it, it didn't really look very classy, really. Mm. Um, for, in my eyes, compared to when yeah. you look at what a NES game looked like back in the day, yeah. coming in a nice box art and the rest of it, and then even like the SNES. Um, but yeah, I've got a few of them. Um, I probably do have a Master System 2. I, I'm never really a fan of the Master System 2 because I always thought it looked like a, it was like a small miniature toaster. You know, you, uh, yeah, you just have to flip the thing like, back. I, the... I always assumed it was like designed for basic like kids in mind. Mm. So it's like, oh, you put the thing in, and you put the little flap thing over the top to stop the three-year-old child wrenching the cartridge <laughs> out while it was in the system. It's funny that they removed the card slot 
Uh, I'm guessing the yeah, card well, things well, weren't very popular. No. Mm. I mean, I never knew about them at the time, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look in a bit and see what kind of prices they are, but I bet you they're not cheap, those cards. No. Um, no. Can I, can I just as, say something while you're... Yeah, just uh, So, I just found a little bit of uh, info. So, it says here, uh, the Mars system was successful in Europe. By 1990, the Mars system was the best-selling console in Europe, though the NES was beginning to have a fast-growing user base in the UK. For the year 1990... Uh, Virgin, because Virgin sold the Master Systems in the UK. So it says a Virgin Master Tronic sold 150,000 Master Systems in the UK, uh, greater than the 60,000 Mega Drives and Nintendo's 80,000 consoles in the same period. So they massively outsold the NES in 1990. In the whole of Europe, say Sega sold 918,000 consoles. Nintendo sold 655,000 consoles. Now, that's weird you say that the Master System sold better than the NES because over the years, I found more NESs. I've probably mm. three times more NESs than I have Master Systems. I, I think yeah. they caught... I think NES... I think Nintendo might have caught up. It was a bit like the Xbox 60 and PS3 era, right? You know, the Xbox 360 sold more for the you know the formative years but then playstation mm. eventually caught up and caught overtook up. them right mm. but yeah no as i said over the years <laughs> i mean i have found mass systems but they're just they're not they're, they're hard to come by I've, mm. the biggest problem is the controllers um they're yeah. really hard to find the controllers and the controllers do actually sell for quite good money actually now well um, funnily enough about the controllers right you you see the the connectors and the masters the same with the mega drive Though those are the same connectors on a lot of home computers in the UK, like the That's Ataris right. and the Amigas, so you could use and them the on those systems as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. So it's a weird yeah. thing you remember <laughs> from when you were yeah, a kid. But, yeah, but no, never, never have one. Um, I have got, as I said, I've got a couple here now. I have used them a few times. Yeah, I do like it. I, one day I'd like to set it up properly and actually play some of the games that I've got that I've picked up over the years that I've never played. Because yeah. uh, there is some quite obscure titles, and there's also stuff like I mean, you had uh, Street to Rage that came out on the Master System. You go, you go on about um, Virgin. Well, Virgin actually did a few games on the Master System as well, mm. like Cool Spot. Um, cool Spot. <laughs> oh, I, I liked Cool Spot on the Mega Drive. I fucking mm. love that game, dude. It was so good. Yeah. So they had that, um, but no, there was there, there, there is some quite good game. I mean, there was Ghostbusters. Um, that was on there. There was Rambo, Rambo Three. Oh, <laughs> what a game! That is still a really good game. Actually, I really enjoy that. And there's, I've been told there's actually a Rambo One on there or something, but mm. I've never seen it. But I had. Well, funnily enough, early. it did have quite a lot of arcade games on the Master System. Mm. Just having a look through the history, Fantasy Zone Two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, Gold good, good Golden Axe. Yeah. Um. I'm just looking for games that I know that I Road Rash was on there. Fucking hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and obviously the Sonics, um, uh, Land of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Asterix. Everyone remembers Asterix. Yeah. I remember Asterix. Yeah. Space Harrier. Yeah. Uh, Donald Duck game. Um, Afterburner. So there's quite a lot of those arcade type titles on there, isn't there? Space Harrier as well. So fantasy star was on there as well yeah bloody so. hell fantasy star the original and operation wolf bloody hell mm. some good games on there yeah i played operation wolf because um, it was actually a gun for the uh master system it was called a phaser i think it was called i've got oh, okay. i think i've got it actually in the box you could buy a master system there was a later model that came out this is the mark one still mm. it actually came with them with the phaser actually in the box that's uh, um that's the one i bought years later Right. I didn't get it when it came. I got one with a box, and I think it had Alex the Kid built in, I think, and it had that Operation Wolf. It never worked. Nothing worked. <laughs> on it. So I, just, I think I got it cheap for like a 10 or 15 quid at the car boot, and it just never worked, so I threw it away. The best really? version of Operation Wolf was for the Spectrum. It used to take almost half an hour to load. <laughs> Um, and then you'd get a loading error, and then you'd come upstairs and you'd get to play it in glorious two-tone graphics. Oh, lovely. 
black and color. But, um, I don't. I thought the um, the Master System one, the, the Mark One, was it, it looked nice console was in to look at. The only thing with it that I'd say it was quite cheap when you when you pick them up. They're very plasticky. Mm. And they, it, it doesn't feel like there's much in it. To listen to the rest of this week's awesome episode, you need to subscribe to the Patreon. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash 360 gamercast. There you can sign up to the Patreon from as little as £5 a month and you will get this episode, which is a staggering 2 hours and 41 minutes long. Talking about the Master System, Mega Drive, Game Gear, and the peripherals such as the Mega CD, the 32X, the Sega Nomad, and much more, including loads of games. This is only part one. In a couple of weeks, we will be continuing our Sega discussion, where we'll be talking about the Sega Saturn and the Sega Dreamcast. And if you subscribe, you get access to all our previous episodes as well. So you'll be able to catch up on our Xbox series of consoles and our PlayStation series of consoles. So don't miss out on any of these super specials and sign up today. So again, the website is patreon.com forward slash 360 gamercast. 